on the Wednesday of the second week of Lent. Uh, I think that day looks a lot like the first Wednesday of Lent, Ash Wednesday, uh, where we get ashes put on our forehead in a sign that reminds me of, I mean, it reminds me of the opposite of what you would expect uh, in a horror movie, right? We all know that in a horror movie, we, we as an audience, you know, uh, uh, sort of yell at the main characters in a horror movie saying, you know, don't go into those spooky woods. Uh, don't go down into that basement, right? It's not safe down there. And so we, we sort of cheer on the main characters to get them out of trouble. And yet on Ash Wednesday, we march right up to trouble. We get the ashes put on our forehead and, and we're even told, you know, remember that you are dust and to dust you will return, you know. This is the way of the Christian. This is what Christians do. And it's an imitation of everything we've ever had revealed to us by God about how he saves us. Think about, for example, Moses leading the Israelites out of Egypt. Can you imagine what it must have been like for the Israelites suffering alongside the Egyptians from so many of these plagues? And then, just as they are all headed out and they're all running and they're headed for what appears to be, they're going to be cornered at the coast of the Red Sea, and they're going to be right between you know, the sea and, and the Egyptian army bearing down upon them, and then God makes a path in the Red Sea for them to cross. How that must have felt like they're marching through what looked like their doom, right? It, it, Moses says, well, in the, in the desert, the Israelites are bitten by snakes, by serpents. And God instructs Moses to, to put a bronze serpent on a pole and hold it up for everyone to see. It's called the caduceus. This symbol is called the caduceus. And he has to hold up the caduceus for everyone to see. And by looking up at that, they were saved. By facing the very thing that had, that had bit them, right? The very thing that had caused them the trouble. They had, to look, they had to look at the cause of their trouble in the eye, right up there. This is similar to Christ, very, very similar to Christ. As we get in the uh, gospel reading for today, the sons of Zebedee, their mother, comes to Jesus and says, uh, I would like for my sons to sit at your right and on your left when your kingdom comes. And yet, when Jesus is on the cross, with a sign above him that says, King of the Jews, with a crown upon his head, albeit a crown of thorns, he's got someone on his right and someone on his left. And it's not the sons of Zebedee, right? It's not them. It, it, th those guys are hiding. <laughs> those guys have run off, it appears. Instead, what you see are two people who deserved the punishment they got, and one of them recognizes Christ and one of them doesn't. And yet, here they all are. Here's Jesus surrounded by other people in this human condition, a human condition which is really coming for everybody, right? It's true. You are dust, and to dust you shall return, right? And, it, and your death is very likely to be inglorious. It's very likely to be something that you would rather avoid. But it's coming. And we, as Christians, recognize that and, and know that in Christ, we should have the courage to march towards it, not wishing for all the bad things, but marching towards it with the confidence that Christ gives us that on the other side of this is more. On the other side of this is his real kingdom, something he invites us to through the very thing we think we would like to avoid. Here we are on this Wednesday of the second week of Lent. Let's recall all of those graces, all of those prayers that we've had for the last few weeks uh, praying that we might be able to draw closer to Christ on his cross. Amen.